So I, I, like, I like the title of this, Digital Trends, Looking at the Power of Engagement, because yesterday you showed the NFL live stream from London. Woo. Yeah, was that good, was that good? <laughs> now, you might not know, but in London this month is the Rugby World Cup. So what, what was the viewership of this Yahoo NFL live stream? Well, uh, well, first of all, personally, it was a very busy sports day for me yesterday. So we, we had the NFL stream with Yahoo, Jacksonville, um, three-point game, really exciting. But also, Rugby World Cup Australia made it through to the final, nice, so we're really nice. happy. <laughs> with some Australians in the audience here. Um, but yeah, super busy day. In terms of the NFL stream, we had, uh, it was 15.2 million streams unique, so that was huge for us. First time we've done anything like this, so... I think everyone's really happy with that. That's an engaged audience, and that 10 million, you were saying, um, came out from the out US. Out of the US, yes, yeah, 10.1, okay. exactly. Fantastic. So um, what are kind of the key trends that you're seeing at Yahoo uh, that, that are happening today in the digital world? Yeah, it's interesting because there's both a vast array of trends, but also you can kind of boil it down to a couple of key things. And I would say uh, the first thing is mobile where we're seeing this huge shift towards mobile. In fact, a lot of folks don't really discuss this, but mobile is the single only medium that is growing in the US in terms of time spent with various media. So traditional media, flat. Um, well, flat or in decline. Digital exclusive of mobile is pretty flat. Mobile growing and growing at rapid clips. So mobile is a huge story. Uh, we're looking at consumers, and when we're, when we're talking about marketing efforts, they're design, desiring less interruptive experiences. So starting to see a little bit of a theme towards branded content, um, brands actually becoming the content and, and, and getting their message through in that way. And then of course, lastly, kind of tying it all together is this idea of environment and the importance of the environment in which brands make these connections with customers. It's somewhat of a multitasking story in there, but I like to think of it not strictly as context, but what environment do we make the connection? And that they would be the three key things that, okay. that we've, we're observing. So mobile, big. Yes. I came from the mobile space, spent years selling mobile phones to probably all of you in the room. Um, mobile, tell us more. Well, uh, as I was saying, in terms of share of time spent, it, it's just growing in rapid clip. But I think what a lot of folks also don't realize is that when we talk about mobile, it's often considered to be the secondary medium by which you go online. So people think, oh, it's, it's the laptop, it's the desktop, that's my primary device. But mobile is actually for, it's around one in five US internet users consider their mobile to be their primary device for going online. And we call them mobile dominance. Um, it's the dominant form of access. And, w and we, see, we, we, we see this rate growing year over year at, at huge clips. So, the idea that mobile is not just this tiny real estate screen, but actually the preferred device um, expanding. And, and certain key audiences, if we talk about millennials, we talk about Hispanic audience, they're even higher with the incidence of using the mobile as primary device. Um, massive trend there. Great, and then content next being another key trend. Everyone here knows content is king. Uh, our, our brands and agencies spending enough time on content strategy or are they just creating content? What's, what, what's happening there? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, so first of all, I would say, and, and for, for the marketers, which is almost all of us in the room, one thing that I would really put out there is that from some of the research we've done, we've found that nine in 10 consumers actually prefer it when brands bring them content that they like, that they love, like resonate with. Um, and so this is sort of a little bit of a different proposition to the marketing of old. We're not just bashing people over the head with, with these outlandish, overt um, ads. This is something that actually brings value. And when we do that, we find that over a quarter of them engage with the, br the brand to a far greater extent than what they, they typically would. And so when you, when you bring into the conversation this idea of, is it strategy, is it tactics? I, I, think, of, I think of the strategy as really being, you have this content, brands build content, consumers build content, but how do you amplify it? And what are the right environments in which you should amplify it? Um, and just, just to sort of bring the idea a little bit further, uh, uh, some, we, we've done a little bit of typology research across the, the different social networks. If you bring social into this as the amplification uh, medium, 
you have you have your Facebooks and your Twitters over here, and if, if everyone thinks of their their Facebook wall circa 2004, it's it's all about friends. It's truly a, a network of friends. You're seeing who's getting married, whose baby um, w w was just born. But we're seeing the the whole notion of social and content evolving to be rather than clustering around people, it's now starting to be clustering around content. And the, whoever's building that content to some, to some extent doesn't matter as much as the content itself. And so you look at Tumblr and, and some of the memes, some of the, the Tumblr, um, some of the Tumblr pages that are hugely popular are being built by just fans, fandoms, uh, you know, Game of Thrones, they're really, um, Game of Thrones is one example where they're really building, it's, it's one of the most popular fandoms on, on Tumblr. Um, and brands have an opportunity to really start getting involved there. So tactics, strategy, it's, it's somewhat hard to answer, but I do think we're seeing an evolution in that amplification for sure. So uh, is there anything brands are missing with branding content that agencies can help them with? Um, I, I might answer this in this way. So in terms of what we've seen be successful this year, so uh, who's familiar with uh, Community? Yep, the TV show Community. Yeah, yeah, we've got some fans. So there was one episode uh, of Community uh, Comedy, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, streaming on, on Yahoo uh, earlier this year for, for a seventh season. Um, one episode where we did a Honda integration, Honda vehicles, and it, it, if for any of, anyone who saw it, it was comedic to the point of ridiculousness. So the episode ended with a teardrop onto a Honda logo. It was just really outlandish, but it worked. It fit the character of the show. And so when we start to talk about branded content and, and that kind of thing, you know, who's doing it well, uh, that's my favorite example probably of the past 12 months where, um, and we measured it being from the Insights team, we saw 400% increase in terms of intent to buy Honda. Um, we saw, sorry, for favorability, it was 400% increase and a 50% increase in intent to buy. So when you do it well, it can really have results and results uh, directly aligned with those objectives. Okay, and so how can brands and agencies work together to create right content to fit the environment? Because that, well, that's that third yeah. trend, right? The environment. And with environment, and, and uh, when I first mentioned that, I, I just want to be really clear, it's distinct from context. So context is very important, but what, what I mean by environment is we, we've seen this web sphere just evolve. It used to be nothing more than a bunch of blue links. You would search something, get blue links, and that was the web. It was largely a text-based experience. Not, not that long ago, really. And now we're seeing a, a far more immersive experience. We have images, video, there are GIFs, and you have, the, you have this tapestry of mechanisms for communicating. And so when we're, when we're talking about making those meaningful connections, I think of it as choosing the right platform for the medium that you have in hand. If you have video, you wanna be in those video areas. You wanna be native to the environment in which you're making that connection. Um, if you're on Tumblr, GIFs and images, that works really well. Um, but just knowing that we've gone so much beyond uh, the text links, um, and in terms of just some of the research that we've seen in that area, we, we've done a few biometric studies. We've shown that when you're in these canvas rich, beautiful environments and when marketing communication happens there, engagement with the brand um, increases. So emotional resonance increases by more than a third. We see memory encoding um, increase. So that is literally the transference from, of something from short term to long term memory increases by more than 40%. The biometric studies show us time and time again, if you, if you leverage more than just the text, if you embed in that environment in a positive way, it'll, it will also have results. Okay, great. Are there questions from the audience? Questions for Yahoo? Yes, right over here. Hi, um, Sabine from Toy Stream. I, I have a question regarding your example, um, regarding the Honda me measurement, the best example of the year you mentioned. How did you actually measure those sales? Was it a Yahoo study or was it an external party? Just curious. Yeah, we actually, uh, so thanks for the question. We actually measured it in a multitude of ways. So we partnered with Millwood Brown Digital to understand the brand impact, the intent on purchase, et cetera. We also um, used uh, a company called Union Metrics to understand the social effect. I'm not sure how many folks are, are familiar, but they're, 
uh, a company, and one of the things they do is measure social amplification. And for that particular episode, for those of you who saw it, you'll get the joke, there was a hashtag, hashtag level seven susceptible. Um, and that, that hashtag was actually, it had, uh, I forget off the top of my head, but in excess of several million um, retweets, reblogs, and, and uses across various social media. So um, this was third party validated. We're not just looking at internal data. Of course we do, um, but the stuff that, that I was really leaning on was the Miller Brown, the union metrics. Great. Any other questions? Tony, thank you. One question here. Oh, oh. Uh, Alex from Shoot. Uh, great example with the community uh, episode, but how would you scale that? Because you can't obviously do you know, a TV episode every night, or, or maybe you can, but what's your advice for, for scaling that in, uh, in this digital era? Yeah, that, that's actually a really tough question. But in, in terms of what we've seen, so I, I do believe it, in, in just in terms of what I've seen, I love that as one example. But the point of engaging with consumers using content marketing is to give them something they love. So it could be attaching to something that's already loved. You know that, that it has a, a large followership, like the community example. It could be as simple as so we've worked with Splendor. Um, it could be as simple as putting some recipes that utilize the product in, in a food area, um, something that's useful. It's not just an ad, it's here's how you can use our product. You can make lemonade, here is a cake recipe that's going to be um, lower calorie. And things that are just genuinely useful to the end consumer and your target audience, that's the stuff we've seen just work really well. And it sounds obvious when you say, hey, give them, give them content that they enjoy, but you'd be surprised how, how often that that's not necessarily the, the first thought that comes to mind when you see some of those branded content initiatives. So I know it doesn't help you scale, but I hope that gives you somewhat of a framework. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Tony's here to Thank speak. You. Thank you. Okay.